so i guess we're about ready to get started our opening him is six eighty six in the catholic book of worship to come back to me to me with all your heart don't let fear keep us apart trees to bend though straight and tall so must we to others call long have I waited for your call Home to me and living deeply our new life. The wilderness will lead you to your heart where I will speak. Integrity and justice. You shall grow. Long have I waited for your coming, and living deeply our new life. You shall sleep secure with peace, faithfulness. coming home to me and living deeply our new life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, and the friendship of God's Holy Spirit be with you always. Today begins our Lenten pilgrimage, this annual retreat of 40 days offered to the Christian world as a chance for us to refocus our gaze back towards God through the life of his son Jesus, most especially his passion, his death, and his ultimate resurrection. And so we pray for courage during this holy season that we might embrace all that Lent can offer us and make the most of each day to renew ourselves in serving and loving Christ and one another. So as we begin our prayer, let us turn our hearts back towards God's mercy as we pray. Lord Jesus, you touch our ears that we may hear your word. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you touch our lips to allow us to share and to teach our faith. Christ have, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you touch our hearts to allow us to love as you have called us to love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May God forgive us in our sin and raise us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to us, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that as we take up battle, against spiritual evils, we may be armed with the weapons of self-restraint. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. And we are now seated as we listen to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether the Lord will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, 
a grain offering and a drink offering to be presented to the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation assembled the ages. Gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said about among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to the psalm, have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. It's okay, John. Oh. He'll sing it. <laughs> Unless John wants to sing it, but Mark. <laughs> we'll let Mark do that. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have, have mercy, mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy, mercy on O Lord, Lord, for we have sinned. For I know my transgressions. My sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a will spirit. O oh Lord, open up my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Have mercy, O oh Lord, for we have A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made Christ to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Christ we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For the Lord says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. 
of eternal glory. Today do not harden your hearts, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before others in order to be seen by them. By doing this, you will lose your reward from my Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that when your alms who are given in secret may be received in secret, and my Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites, for they love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let others know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that no one will know you are fasting except your Father who sees all that is done in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. There's an old saying we sometimes use when dealing with other people, kind of people who may have been spinning out or sputtering out in life in a bit of a rut. We kind of sometimes use the expression, what you see at 30 is is what you get. And that basically just asserts a, a kind of folksy kind of tradition that most people are incapable of real solid change once we hit the age of 30. Most of our development, mentally, emotionally, spiritually even, takes place in those early years of life. And until or unless something significant, dramatic, or even traumatic happens or forces us out of where we are, we don't often make great changes in our life until we absolutely need to. For ourselves as Christians, this season of Lent is all about change. But it's not change of the world. It's not change of our families. It's not a change of our relationships. It's a change that happens from within. It's a chance for us as Christians to refocus our lives with a desire to be in unity, with union, with God. And we're given the example of our Lord Jesus' life. These 40 days are spent slowly guiding us towards the celebration of our Lord's passion, his death, and ultimately his resurrection. It's the cornerstone, the foundation of our entire belief and our prayer. And so these are chosen days, intentional days, that can pass by very, very quickly, rapidly. I mean, I can't even believe we're in the middle of February already. You know, like it's just days go by so fast. And so we're invited to take this pilgrimage, 
with the Lord every year as a chance to renew our hearts and as a chance to make progress in our relationship with God, which ultimately changes ourselves from the inside and changes the fabric of our relationships with others. It changes how we live. It changes how we love. And most especially, it can change the way we forgive. The way we learn to use God's mercy in the world. Now in the gospel tonight, you've all heard that reading many times before. It's the same reading we use every year on Ash Wednesday. And within that reading is a wealth, an absolute wealth of suggestions. They're not commandments. They're suggestions. Jesus always chooses to lighten the load. He doesn't want any of his followers to feel overburdened. There's enough of that in the world as it is. We don't need to go looking for more things to stress about. We don't need to go looking for more things to frustrate us. They're going to come on their own way. We don't have to go looking for them. But our life of faith is rooted in God who seeks to lift burdens from our lives, not impose them. And Jesus gives a very simple suggestion for his followers and for us tonight. And it has everything to do with quieting ourselves down. It's so simple that we can miss it. And he asks us to go about our lives quietly. To not look for the dramatic all the time. God seldom reveals goodness in any dramatic way. It's most often revealed to us in the little things. And so Jesus reminds his followers, as he does ourselves, at the beginning of this season of Lent, to keep it simple. To keep it simple. Can I be changed by the word of God? Can I change how it is I relate to God? And can that relationship be reflected in my other relationships? So that the people I've chosen to love, that I've been called to love. My wife, my husband, my partner, my spouse, my children, my parents, the people I work with, the people I play with. doesn't matter. Can those relationships be influenced by my relationship and my love for God and God's love and mercy for me? And so Jesus says, take time to go into a quiet place. People don't need to know. They don't need to know every move you make. They don't need to see every, every thought you have. Quiet. Time with God. To listen to what God has to say to us. And to allow our hearts to share with God the journey of life that we have to live. That can often be unfair at times. Can often be challenging, painful and hurtful. Can often challenge us to accept the very worst in our lives. While also encouraging us to strive to keep working for the very best. And so I invite you at the beginning of this season to maybe carving out a little place in your day, however small. It doesn't have to be long. However small. Life is busy. I get it. We're all going in a hundred different directions all the time. But to carve out a little place where we can have that time to allow the Word of God and the heart of God to renew us. To inflame our hearts once again 
with a desire to know more about who God really is and what he calls us to. To take a conscious and intentional effort to put into practice works of charity. And I'll challenge you to this. Don't let it involve money. So often, that's the easiest thing to do, is to give money. I'm talking about charity that's rooted in flesh and blood. That's rooted in our own hands and feet. Of a desire to be charitable, to be of service to the people around us each day. And to consecrate a special act, maybe each day or maybe once a week where we really intentionally go out of our way to ease the suffering, the fear of someone else. These are the tried, tested, and true ways that have proven to strengthen the fabric of our lives when we learn to intentionally put someone else before ourselves there is a great moment in which both hearts learn to deepen themselves and to expand. And so make this Lent intentional. Don't worry about what you're giving up. But instead, put some attention into what you're actually truthfully going to do. Make it a season of action that's rooted in Christ's desire for us to make his love and mercy felt in our families, in our communities, and in our world. In a few moments, you'll come forward to receive these ashes that we consecrate every year from palms that were burned from the previous year. And it's a sign of our mortality. It's a sign of our frailty. It's a sign that no matter how important or powerful or strong we believe ourselves to be, at the end of the day, we turn to dust. That it's only God and God's love that carries us into new life. We can't bring ourselves there solely on our own. And so as you receive these ashes tonight, be mindful that the final word on all of our lives has not been spoken. And that God has as much hope and promise in store for you as you have always dreamed of and hoped for, maybe even longed for. To see God not as a judge, but has a loving, caring heart that only stretches further and further every day to bring all people together into one. He has no need to divide us from saints or sinners. We do that. God never has. God only embraces what he himself created solely out of love. And that's a love I don't know how to imitate well. And I can't on my own. But with God's help, we all can. Do a little better than we did before. And that's what this season is all about. So I invite you to stand as we bless these ashes for ourselves and for our service today. Let us pray. Loving God, who desire not the death of sinners, but our conversion, mercifully hear our prayers, and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes, which we intend to receive upon our heads, that we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust, may through a steadfast observance of Lent gain pardon for our sin and newness of life after the likeness of your risen Son. 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Remember, John, you are dust, and unto dust you will return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Now sing number 685 in the Catholic Book of Worship to have a sweet way of transgression. Transgression. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. I will sweep away your transgressions like a cloud. So return to me, I will heal you, for I love you. If you say to me, Father, I am blind, if you say Surely my iniquity cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, our loving and very generous Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. Loving Lord, as we solemnly offer this annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we ask that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and being cleansed from our sin, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, 
contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we too proclaim your glory as we pray. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. We kneel together. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that we may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look upon your people's offering and pour out upon them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we have become your sons and daughters. Indeed, though once we were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the deepest of love. For your Son, who alone is just, accepted to be handed over to death for our sake and to be nailed to the cross. Yet before he stretched out his hands between heaven and earth to become the everlasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke it and handed it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. At the end of the meal, knowing he was to reconcile all things through the blood of his cross, he took the cup filled with wine, and once more giving you thanks, handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. We stand as we proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our lasting peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you, our faithful and our merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. And grant through the power of the Holy Spirit, as we share this one bread and one cup, we may be gathered into the one body of Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Murray, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, the Martyrs, Saint Anne, Saint Oscar Romero, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. 
through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Gathering our prayer and praise into one voice, we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil but Lord, from every evil, grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. And protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of Jesus Christ for the kingdom, the power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer that peace to one another.
Behold Jesus, the true Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Communion hymn is number 684 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Forgive our sins as we forgive. Let us stand and conclude our prayer. Loving Lord, may the sacrament we have received sustain us, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for each of us a healing remedy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go live tonight for the glory of God. Thanks be to God. The processional hymn is Lord Who Throughout These Forty Days, uh, 482 in the Catholic Book of Worship. these forty days for us did fast and pray teach us to overcome our sin and close by you to stay 
as you with Satan contend and did the victory win. Oh, give us strength in you to fight, in you to conquer sin. As you did hunger and did thirst, so teach us, gracious Lord, to die to self and soul, to live by your most holy word. And through these days of penitence, and through your passion tide, forevermore in life and death, O oh Lord, 